This is the Homecoming with the Downey Brothers Podcast, where we talk about real estate, business, and financial literacy. They live by the motto, dream, plan, execute. Your host, Anthony and Anton Downing. Welcome to Homecoming with the Downer Brothers. This is Anthony. And this is Anton. And today, man, we're talking security. Home security. We're talking about breaks level security. You know, some of like secure home automation security. All right, so, you know, we, there's, there's, there's certain things that, you know, people need. Um, when you're a homeowner, or if you're if you're investing in homes, and that's why we had to bring today's guest on. You guys, hey, hey, can you guys introduce yourselves? Mm-hmm. Sure, sure, no doubt about it. My name is Stacy Chauncey, President and CEO of Secure Home and Automation, Brinks Home Security. Uh, mm-hmm. My name is Dawood Sefula. I'm the Director of Operations and Enterprise Solutions. All right, so great. So, we, we, you know, we've been working with you brothers uh, for the, the, the past year. You right. know what I'm saying? Adding value, <laughs> you know, to, to home. Absolutely. Because that, that's what it, it all comes down to. Once 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 you understand that mm-hmm. you're trying to protect your investment, which we found out real early on, because when, when you are doing a renovation and it's vacant, people mm-hmm. will break in to steal your copper pipes. Absolutely. It you, is something about copper, man. <laughs> <laughs> and we learned real early on, you know what? We're going to have this security system on here because I'd rather fix a broken door than to fix all my copper pipes being gone in my building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, co- copper pipe theft is um, coincidentally the number one thing that uh, construction sites suffer, people suffer from, particularly um, construction sites and renovations. So the total estimate for copper theft from construction and renovation sites is estimated at about a billion dollars. Right. So would it be? It's, a, it's a huge problem. And then they mm-hmm. then in addition to the copper, they steal your fixtures. So if you got new lighting fixtures, you got new plumbing fixtures, all of that kind of stuff is like uh, par for the course when it comes to theft. Right, right, right. So, I mean, dude, I mean, hey, you know what? Before, before we go any further... You know, this is Homecoming with the Downer Brothers. And sometimes mm-hmm. we jump right into the subject and we started talking <laughs> about security. Right. But this is Homecoming with the Downer Brothers. And, you know, and, and, and that's personal. Can you all tell us where you're from and what you learned about um, real estate, business, or financial literacy when you were growing up? Mm-hmm. All right, th- th- that's a great question. So I'm, I'm from a small town in Michigan by the name of Ypsilanti, Michigan. It's right outside of Ann Arbor. Uh, Eastern Michigan University is in, is in Ypsilanti as well. Oh, okay. Uh, and so when you, when you talk about financial literacy, unfortunate financial literacy, unfortunately, it's not really taught. You know, to us mm. until we get a little older. And you go to college, you get all those credit cards and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. Then, then you in debt, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. So a lot of things, unfortunately, you have to kind of teach yourself a little bit. You know, trial and error, if you will. Um, so, but with that being said, it's very important for me to pay myself first. Mm-hmm. You know, and also make sure that the complete staff is paid before we do anything. So that, that's what I'll say real quick in terms of financial literacy, making sure you save something and pay the people around you first. Yeah, we, mm. but honestly. At what point in your life did you understand that? Was that something that you had already figured out in eighth grade, or did it take a little bit later in life for you to understand this? Um, it, it, t- it took a little bit later on in life. I mean, you know, life is about trial and error, believe it or not. You know what I'm saying? So so you learn through some of those errors, and you have to understand if you want to be a, a good business and a solvent business, you got to make sure the people around you are paid so you continue to have a great reputation within the industry, whichever industry you, you, you're involved in. Right, right. What about, about you? Where are yeah. you from? Uh, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. originally from Chicago, born and raised, and I was uh, blessed, man, that my dad was really uh, good from a financial perspective. So he mm-hmm. he paid all the bills in the house. Um, you know, he allowed my mother to keep 100 percent of the money she earned. So mm-hmm. it was a thing where her money was her money. And for him, his money you know, took care of us and the family. So my father was really good from a financial planning perspective. Um, the ins- the life insurance policies that he had. Um, continue and the the uh, annuity that he set up continues to pay my mother to this day. So wow. it's a uh, yeah. So it, it that that kind of sought us all the way through. So I learned a lot at a very early age. Unfortunately, he passed away when I was nine. But mm. I learned so much between that between birth and nine that it's, it's carried me for a large part of my life. So my father was very um, instrumental in giving me that initial financial that kind of insight into financial knowledge and why this stuff is important. And then as I progressed in life, then I learned all these little things about, you know, money management, financial management, and making sure that you stay on top of um, rec- the, the, your cash flow. And specifically, you always want to make more money than you spend. Right. Correct. Definitely. Did all of that? Absolutely. Well, 
the pull you towards uh, entrepreneurship as far as being in business for yourself? Uh, from a business mm-hmm. perspective, man, you know what what really got me going was is I was tired. I had gotten I was working for a dot com company, and then I was then I was working for that dot com company ended up um, going out of business. Their business model, you know, really really wasn't working out for them, mm-hmm. and they they were laying people off. And then I ended up going to work for another dot com company. About a year later, they went the same route. I said, man, it's oh. not worth it's not worth the dot com thing is <laughs> about not, the buzz. This is not it. Wow. It's, it's about the it's about the buzz not working out. So uh, after that, I went to work for a consulting firm, and I I got an opportunity to learn the consulting business kind of hands on, mm. and how technology and technology consulting went. And when I saw that, I said, man, I can do this. You know, I could really really do this on my own. So I was blessed to be able to um, have some connections that I had made early on. I bid on some contracts, and one of those contracts actually got accepted. And mm-hmm. when that contract got accepted, the next step was you had to now give all of the required documentation. So you need to have your certificate of insurance. You need to have your your bond. You needed to give copies of your business license. And I was like, okay, now let me get all this stuff together. So now that I got the contract, <laughs> okay. let me okay. go get this insurance policy. Correct. Let me go get this. Let me go get all the things that I need to be able to now do this business. And that was that was my start. You know, and, mm-hmm. and, and for me, my start was... I've been a regional manager, sales manager, you know, for uh, the competition, and I was the the trainer, the recruiter. You know, I did some everything within the organization, and everywhere I would go, guys, I would find myself being expendable. I would get a company to a certain level, and then they didn't want to pay me uh, the extra money based on me getting them to that next level. Right. So they always want to have a conversation like, we need to cut you in this area, mm. but when I came in, you know, they were really struggling. We ended up getting them to a certain level where they were number one in the country and number top five in the country, you know, with these dealer programs. So with those dealer programs, I was responsible for recruiting the, the personnel, training the personnel, you know, uh, handling all the marketing aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And so I found myself saying, listen, I don't want to be expendable to anybody else again. Let me go out here and strike it out on my own and see what I can do for myself. I, if I can get these guys, you know, 15 hours a day because I was working those type of hours, I can do it for myself. And that's how I ended up starting Secure Home and Automation brings out home security. Oh, I like that. Man, nothing like being your own boss, it's, yeah. especially after, you know, time and again being, sh- you know, so, so short. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's something about independence. And, I mean, if, you, if you're going to work that hard for something, I mean, honestly, I don't think it's – sometimes it's not work for me. Sometimes I'm looking forward yes. to – actually making a deal happen i'm looking mm-hmm. forward to right. meeting the crew right. on the first day to start a renovation it's like when you're passionate about something correct it's not work it's not work because i work. mean i right. love right. what i'm doing right. 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 making a difference yeah right. yeah, yeah. and, and uh, you're still training people like you're creating jobs absolutely as a matter of fact we just brought on three new individuals over the last week or so Right. Uh, and so that's what it's about in terms of continuing to build, creating the right type of culture, you know, for the organization to go to the next level. Right, right, right. So, wait, I don't know if I want to get into this yet. Should I get into this about about about, about the actual home security? No, not yet, because, you know, I need to do the <laughs> definition of the day. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean Anton's <laughs> definition of the day. Doom, doom, doom. And the definition today is license C. A licensee is a person to whom a license is granted. A licensee has a license to use someone else's specified property, such as a building, a land, or intellectual property. A licensee is privileged to enter or remain on a specified property only by virtue of the possessor's or the licensor's consent. And I bring up licensee because a lot of people have heard of a franchise, like McDonald's having a franchise, Subway franchise. But I think a lot of our you know, our listeners and you know the homies out there have not necessarily have heard of a licensee and how that benefits uh, you know a business. And I, I heard you talking about licensee to a degree yeah. at the seminar that we had you know this past weekend. Yeah, uh, so that that's a very good point. So as a as a licensee uh, for Brinks, uh, what what it really entails is the fact that there is a inherent. Uh, value proposition that's created with the Brinks name because mm-hmm. Brinks is the is the oldest continuously operating security company, um, and mm-hmm. because they started so so long ago, and Perry Brink actually started the company right here in Chicago. There's a certain pedigree um, to that name. So mm-hmm. from from that vantage point, it's important in our go-to market strategy 
um, to utilize a company that had the same value proposition, the same value system and ideals. And Brinks really, really represents that in the security space. So when okay. it comes to it, we, you know, they're synonymous with um, securing financial, uh, specifically with securing the, the money. The or, as, or as we call it, securing, right. securing oh, the yeah. bag. Securing the, the bag. bag, for sure. <laughs> so everybody wants to make money, and <laughs> we always say that we secure the bag. So mm -hmm. from a residential and um, physical property security standpoint, that name translates, and there's a, a value add for that name in the industry. And that being said, when you think of securing your property and securing your home, you want a name that resonates. And so as a right. licensee of Brinks, we use that resonance in order to show people and, the, and to create that value proposition for the customer. There's strength in the name, right? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I think everyone's heard of Brinks. Right. <laughs> if, if it's not the Brinks trucks, it's, it's the, the Brinks security system Correct. inside of your home. Correct. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, um... Honestly, that actually brings us to brings us to the to the homecoming event, and this is where I actually just talk about events that we we see in the news, and this actually pertains directly to this conversation. Okay, the home security system market is expected to reach seventy four point seven five billion dollars by twenty twenty three, from forty five billion dollars in twenty eighteen. So, I mean. The, the market share and the amount of money being poured into the mm -hmm. security system uh, industry is happening for a reason. People want right. to secure what they have. Correct. Yeah, there, there are a lot of companies doing, doing security, and the market is only going to grow. And, and I think that that number is really high because people are doing more home automation than anything. So it's not just security. And we, we always tell individuals that we are a life safety company mm -hmm. and not just an alarm company. You know, because right. we do so many more things than just a security system. You know, whether it's allowing you to be able to control your your, your thermostat, your smart locks, your cameras, your lighting. All from your you cell know, phone. All, all from your cell phone. Yeah. Being, we, we always say you can't manage what you can't see. You know, so when grandma's at home, she has a caregiver coming into the home. Uh, we have a camera that allows two-way voice where they can communicate with their caregiver and make sure proper care is being received. So, mm -hmm. so those numbers are really growing because of the home automation piece to it. Mm -hmm. It's not just the security side to it. Yeah, not what he said. <laughs> <laughs> That's huge too, because uh, the our the first smart home that we've done, we did with you all, mm -hmm. and we we saw that with the thermostat. And, uh, the smoke detector, the CO detector, the yeah, flood. The, the flood detectors, yeah. uh, monitors right. in the basement. You know, the home was smart, and I noticed the difference. Like, that's the type of, pro of mm -hmm. re renovation we want to do from this point forward. Right, because I, 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 I think what I like about it is, I mean, you, you see people come through to uh, to view the home, and when they see all these gadgets and they understand how they work, they're like, well, this other house I was looking at, doesn't have all this. I think I, I think you can see that they like this house better. It's in the mm -hmm. same neighborhood, right. but it doesn't have home yes. versus having a speakers having a in smart the cell and speak, speakers mm -hmm. in the in the kitchen. <laughs> exactly. You know, exactly. I mean, it's, it takes the renovation to a whole other level. That's that extra sauce. <laughs> it is. It is <laughs> absolutely. Right. Now, now tell it's tell us like value we, I also mm -hmm. going back to this home coming event. You, we we see it going to seventy five billion for another reason though. There's a lot of people who are entering into the into the industry like Ring and all of these different types of. Uh, they're not wired. What's the difference between what what you all are doing and what? Because I that's the reason why there's a lot of competition. A lot of people pouring money right, into this new technology. Right. What's mm -hmm. the difference and what makes what you guys are doing better? So you know that's a very good question, man. And, and the short answer to it is is that our product is really differentiated. So uh, our go-to-market strategy is different. Ring is primarily a DIY brand, so it's really designed for people to go buy the product and kind of install it themselves. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. like to concentrate more in the professional installation. You know, one of the things I say about Ring is it's a great product, but are you seeing now all the problems that they're having uh, related to the product being hacked, people are able to gain control of those cameras, right, and be able mm -hmm. to talk to people through those cameras. <laughs> people are watching people's children and saying, hey, I'm Santa Claus. You know, don't you want me to be your friend? Mm -hmm. And so oh, no. that's really scary because now it's having the exact opposite effect. Now it becomes a security breach mm -hmm. instead of a, of a provision of security. Mm -hmm. So one of the issues there is not that, it's that, that the ring is a deficient product, mm -hmm. right? It's the installation of the product. So I always ask people, how many people have heard of um, multi-factor authentication? And people, so a couple people raise their hand. 
And then I said, how many people know how to implement multi-factor authentication? And nobody raised Crickets. their hands. Crickets. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the right. product has multi-factor authentication, but if you don't know what that is or how to do it, so people will be going through the manual and they'll be looking at how to do it and they get to this part and they start looking at a bunch of terms they don't understand mm -hmm. and they be like, you know, can I see an image? Oh, shit's working. Fuck it. They just throw, they just throw the thing down. Mm -hmm. Right. And so at that point, they feel like it's good enough. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is that if you don't follow that process all the way through, you end up having something that is deficient, but you don't understand its deficiencies. Correct. Yeah. So the beneficial part for us about professionally installed security is that we're installing products and we're managing the complete life cycle of the product. So mm -hmm. from the installation and this initial implementation, and then we're going to manage the security in that device going forward. So as new updates come, become available, and if there are any security loopholes that are found, we're going to patch those immediately. And because the product is monitored 24-7, we can see if there is unexpected activity. Because you always have zero-day exploits, meaning that something that initially came out, you haven't even had time to patch it, and it's already a threat. Oh. If someone is monitoring it, I can remotely shut that device down. Hey, this thing looks like it's been compromised. It's displaying some abnormal and unusual behavior. So I want to make sure that until we have an opportunity to check that and validate that this behavior is accurate, I want to shut this thing down. Or I want to put it into a reduced operating condition. So those are things that are available mm -hmm. um, in professional security installations that is not going to be available in a DIY situation. There is no secondary responsible party that can actually come in and manage this thing. It's pretty much you implement it and you can call Ring about it, but Ring just fired two employees for watching people's video that they shouldn't be watching. Right. So oh. you really, yeah, so you and, really got to think and, about and, that. And so and just to dovetail a little bit what he's saying, the challenge has really been been the indoor cameras with the alarm systems, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Not so much the exterior ring doorbell cameras. Who really cares on the outside looking at my front porch or whatever? That's really not that big of a deal. I mean, you, you don't want anybody hacking it, but I'm just mm -hmm. saying, right. as opposed to you looking at my daughter and my wife walking through my home, so on and so forth. Right. Right. Um, but the other thing is that um, all of our technicians, they're not individual contractors. They work at our company. Mm -hmm. So they're not subcontracted. Uh, and so that, that makes a difference. But again, when people are getting these systems in the box, uh, me and Dad would always talk about the fact that people should not even utilize this technology unless it's been tried and tested for at least two or three years before they start putting it in their own home, so on and so forth. But, mm -hmm. but Ring has been so, so popular that people is jumping on everything that they're actually putting out there. And then after the fact, they're figuring out uh, a few glitches here, and let's, let's, let's dial it back just a little bit. It's not just Ring. It's Simply Safe as well. And we're not slamming a competitor. I just had a situation probably about three months ago where one of the investors had a Simply Safe system, and they were just about to close on the home. Someone broke into the home, took the tower, unplugged it, walked out. Uh, no one ever responded. When they came in some hours later, all the stainless steel appliances were actually gone. You know, so then they called us out Man. to mm. actually put in a system. Uh, now they want the whole home wired for sound. Uh, and so there's certain things you cannot cut corners on, mm -hmm. and protecting your investment and your family is one of those things. Now, the people that are listening right now are thinking that we're probably already Googling how much does it cost me to put, you know, speakers and rings and, and thermostat, smart. You know, oh, this thing looks like it's going to cost thousands of dollars. I'm glad y'all are thinking about this right now because I'm going to tell y'all, you can roll all this into the mortgage. And I, and I think that for those of us that are listening who are investors, who are going to be renovating a property right now, this is the thing that you should take from this episode of nothing else. It's only a few thousand dollars. It rolls into your mortgage. You're not going to feel it, period. You need to do it at the very beginning when you first sign for this property. So you're talking Absolutely. about, so wait, well, let, let's dive into that. So, you know, when you purchase a property, um, you're getting the financing. To, when you get a mortgage, you're getting the financing to purchase a property. Mm -hmm. When you're purchasing that property, there's certain things that you can actually roll into it. For instance, if you're doing a, a 203K renovation, you can actually roll both the purchase of the property and the renovation of the property into one loan. And one of those things that that's part of the renovation that you can roll into the loan is the the smart home security system, mm -hmm. which which is f to, to, to roll into that renovation, a line item on there that says, okay, I'm going to spend $3,000 to get the, the mm -hmm. thermostat, the CO, the smoke detector, mm -hmm. the flood detector, mm -hmm. the security system, all, and it sounds, sounds whatever, you, you select your package, and it's a part of the, the financing when you purchase the home. Right. Did I get that right? 
Yeah, 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 absolutely. A lot of the, the systems that we're installing are generally speaking included with properties already. The problem is people aren't used to those things being smart. So in the renovation of a home, mm -hmm. it's already required that you have smoke detectors. And it's mm -hmm. required in a lot of jurisdictions, particularly here in Chicago, in Chicago that those smoke detectors be interconnected. Correct. Which means that if one of the detectors, one of the smoke detectors go off, then they all have to go off. Mm -hmm. Well, we can actually now integrate that where that smoke detector talks to the alarm system and there actually is an immediate police response. So the police, uh, the, I'm sorry, not the police, but the fire department. Yeah, the fire we'll department. That, Come on, we'll man, you talking about the fire The fire department is going to get that notification yeah. immediately um, through the monitoring center. So most smoke mm -hmm. detectors right now are just are just dumb. And what I mean by that is all they do is make noise. Mm -hmm. So smoke yeah. detectors are essentially glorified noisemakers. Right. As long as somebody's at home to hear the sound they make, then they're great. They can wake you up. They can get you out of the house. But what happens when no someone there. is not there? Right. If no one's there, no one's there to hear it, then your house burns down, right? Until somebody right. calls and right. says, hey, man. Which, and and it's too late by the time it, it, exactly. we see smoke and fire. Exactly. Right. So the reality of it is is that the, the benefit is the early detection, the early warning. Correct. Uh, and yeah. by it being tied yeah. into active monitoring, we, you can do that. So all we're doing is taking all the features that are already going to be included in a home, and we're saying instead of that, put these smart items in. And then you just have the cost of, of monitoring versus mm. you trying to come up front and pay for these devices or that kind of thing. We're mm -hmm. going to put all of this into the home. So it also gives you the, the ability to add in other things like whole home audio, mm -hmm. right? The ability to add in, you know, video, some bells and whistles there. Yeah, Wi-Fi. So, yeah, if you want to add Wi-Fi as well, that's a mm -hmm. very popular ad. I'm glad you brought that up because mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of people have dead spots in their house. Like, man, my house was, is, is hot. I got this nice house. But mm -hmm. then when you go when you go past the kitchen, Man, my phone's not working. I can't get on my. And then you got to go crowd around the little the little motor. <laughs> right, right, right. Use your computer. So or if there's like four or five uh, different devices, devices at the same time. So it, you, exactly. So you can make it so that it's strong. You need that hot Correct. Spot. So by having whole home <laughs> Wi-Fi, what we typically tend to do is we deploy an access point on every floor of the home. Correct. And then we're going to use the best technology so that it's going to give you the, the broadest spectrum and the greatest reach and it's going to work for multiple protocols. So you have all these different uh, protocols in wireless, 802.11a, b, g, N, you know, it keeps going on. So every time they make something new, <laughs> okay. right, you need, a, you need a, a different a different thing to be able to pick up that, a different uh, access point to be able to pick up that protocol. Mm. And so what we're saying is, is that we're going to give you an AP that's going to allow you to pick up that protocol, but we're going to put in multiple access points and then from a technology perspective we mesh that together so that you can seamlessly roam from one floor to the other without signal loss and without a disconnection of your um, internet connectivity so if I'm if I'm working on something and I'm watching a movie and I want to go from my first floor to my second floor then I can do that without mm -hmm. that movie pausing or having a hiccup it's gonna roam from one access point to another so you guys so so secure Secure home automation and Brinks have come a long way from just installing a security system. Absolutely. Correct. I mean, the reason why this has become a set or is on its way to becoming a $75 billion industry is because this is far beyond just having a security alarm. A absolutely. Yeah, ab absolutely. So, so one of the things that, I, that I'll touch on, just kind of dial back just a little bit, is that when you start talking about adding that smart home technology, mm -hmm. and depending on the community, um, there's really some steps to that to, to determine how much smart home stuff we can put into that particular home to make it cost effective, and we were talking about that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a, an area that's really not that desirable, and you're talking about putting for example, theater system, theater surround sound system, and cameras all around the home, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and automated shades and all that kind of stuff. But but the average home in that area is not going to sell for, you know, 350000 You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You won't be able to put $20,000 or $10,000 worth of uh, equipment in that particular home. So it, it has yeah. to have that loan to value and stuff like that and make it make sense uh, okay. in order for us to put that type of technology in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so Stace is speaking, you know, sp from an investor standpoint, because Correct. you all, you know, yeah. primarily are talking about, you know, the repair and the rehab of homes and, and from an investor standpoint, mm -hmm. if it's your house and you want to make it nice, man, put in whatever you want. That's if you want a theater, right. you yeah. want whatever, Correct. you know, do all, right. do all of that. But if uh, this is a property that you're going to be reselling, meaning that right. you're going to buy it at, at one price, you're going to then repair it, and then you're going to put that product back on the market. Um, many of your listeners probably know there's a thing called ARV, which stands for after repair value. Mm -hmm. That after repair value is a calculation of the value of the home after you put in the repairs based on the comparable homes within that area. So mm -hmm. that's generally a calculation that is made by uh, realtors 
um, and other investment professionals who understand the real estate market. And so what we do is we actually work with the realtors and we work with the investors to say, hey, this is the max ARV of properties of this size mm-hmm. in this area. So if you try to put in, you know, twenty or thirty thousand dollars worth of uh, electronics into this property, right? You're looking at a 15% to 30% generally increase in mm-hmm. that sales price. Mm-hmm. You're probably not going to be able to see that based upon the ARV in the area, or you're going to, or you may, we may say, hey, you're going to see all of that by putting in just a little bit. You're going to get this level of return. So we always try to tell potential investors how to prioritize their money. So here's right. where to spend your money for the maximum rate of return. Correct. Security is number one. That's the biggest value proposition. Su- surveillance cameras are huge. Everybody wants cameras to be able to see what's going on at mm-hmm. their property when they're not there. Mm-hmm. That's going to give you your biggest ROI. Of, of, of course, the alarm system Wait. married to that. For all the homies out there, ROI. That's, yeah. Return yeah. on right. investment. <laughs> Return on investment. <laughs> right. yeah. we, we, always, we want all the homies to understand we don't want anything to go over their heads. Right, so. right, right. right. For sure. So, yeah, that's going to give you your biggest return on investment. Now, mm-hmm. adding in other features like contro- like lighting control, that's the, that's the next thing that's going to give you a huge ROI. Mm-hmm. Thermostats, of mm-hmm. course, everybody likes the controllable thermostats now. Um, in addition to that whole home audio, that's going to give you uh, a huge piece in terms of return. Whole home mm-hmm. audio is actually one of those things that don't cost a lot. It just needs to be d- as long as it's done before the walls go up. Correct. Right. So from mm-hmm. an investor standpoint, if a person is buying a property and they're looking to rehab that property, then it's important to give us a call at the planning stage. So we can say, hey, this is where you want to put your speakers. This is how far right. you want to space them. This is the size speaker you want. We can run the wire beforehand. And mm-hmm. so therefore, you're going to get the proper installation of those speakers and you're not going to pay a lot of money so by including that. So these are all the things that we kind of talk about that we can that we work with investors on, we work with the realtors on, so we make sure that we're giving you the maximum bang for your buck. I like how you're looking out for the investors. You know, it's the to me, that's the biggest difference between a good company and a bad company. Like, a bad company is going to sell you stuff that you don't even need right. just to get some money, <laughs> right. you know, but for you to look out for an investor, especially investors that like ourselves that are going to do property after property after property, right. it matters it, to, so that we can keep our relationship. Absolutely. That, that's you great, man. When you guys are winning, we're winning at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and y'all really looked out on, for us on that last property because <laughs> <laughs> because the the smoke detectors they weren't you know they weren't communicating. So y'all immediately came in. I was like, yeah, we're gonna make these communicate. We're gonna bring this in. Right. And we, we, y'all y'all hooked it up. Yeah. Right. yeah, and so, it was in like like the eleventh hour too. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, so we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate it, man. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. the city is uh, no pleasure. joke. I know, man. The no. city was coming for yeah, us, man, city, on that yeah. one. But y'all came <laughs> through, though. Hey, you got to be right. cold. <laughs> right. All right. So, all right. So right now, um, I want to ask you all. Let's see. You know, we call this the dream plan execute moment, okay. and mm-hmm. this is where you guys tell us about something. Um, in, in your business experience that you dreamed of, uh, the plan you wrote out to make you know to make it happen, and the actions that you took to execute on that. So, what, what were you all's dream plan? Plan execute execute moment. Yeah. Huh. Does anything come to mind in your business life that that we planned out? We we kind of executed. What? So this might sound mm-hmm. a little bit corny, right? Mm-hmm. And and that Will was just just laughing about a week and a half ago. Mm-hmm. I'm real big on vision boards, okay. right? Mm-hmm. So I put a vision board together about couple years ago and I actually put two vehicles on it um, work vehicle the one that has the brinks on it mm-hmm. right and I took a picture of it and I would I would look at it and go back and read it maybe every couple of weeks or so mm-hmm. um, we also had talked about hitting certain numbers and so at the end of the year uh, we had end up hitting 350 new customers mm-hmm. uh, I looked up I purchased mm-hmm. those two vehicles not only did I purchase those vehicles they were actually the vehicle that was on my vision board that's how crazy that was Mm-hmm. That, that little Chevy track that I drive that had the Brinks logo on it. Mm-hmm. It was that particular vehicle, and so we hit some we hit some um, some numbers um, that we talked about in the beginning of the year. But we've just been running so tough, I didn't realize that we hit them until the end of the year. So we end up be, that's when we first became the number one uh, Brinks home security dealer in the Chicago. Uh, really, land number area. one, number one. See, that's why we brought Yo, you. Man. That's why we brought uh, you guys I didn't on the show. Know that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna pretend like I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Only number one around here. <laughs> that's what's up. Yeah, so that yeah, that's that, that definitely meets it, man. That's a dream plan, execute moment for, uh, for it. and that's what we're mm-hmm. looking for. You know, because mm-hmm. in business, in real estate, uh, in life, 
you got you have to you, one you still have to have dreams you still have to because some people stop dreaming but you have to have dreams in, 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 of things that you want to achieve and but yeah. then you take that dream and you write it down or you make a vision board as he Correct. said mm-hmm. and then once you look at that vision board as a reminder and you start setting out your plan of action then you have to actually take action absolutely to actually go out and get that accountability what, yeah. Right. And, right. yeah and being able to and if you have team members and and, and, uh, and partners holding each other accountable um, you know, to that dream, to that plan, until you actually execute it. So thanks, mm-hmm. thank you for that. We that's what we want. That's what we're looking for. All right. Good so stuff. I got a question. I'm gonna start with Dawu. Okay. When you hear just off the top of your head, yeah, yeah. When you hear the word homecoming, what does that mean to you? Uh, the first thing I think of when I hear the word homecoming is mm-hmm. college homecoming. Mm-hmm. So the homecomings the college have with the uh, with the football game, and you coming back to your alma mater and seeing seeing your people and that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What about you? What, 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 what do you think? You know, about um, being a military vet, when I think of the word homecoming, I think of soldiers coming back home. Yeah. Okay, you know, to their families. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, mm-hmm. where you see those cool videos of of them surprising their their loved ones. You know, so that's that's what comes to mind when I think of homecoming. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. Um, with that, with those two thoughts in mind, do you, either one of you have any kind of story of an actual, like, you know, interesting <laughs> or awkward or funny uh, homecoming story from your life? <laughs> funny homecoming story. <laughs> uh, I got something, but I'm going to tell y'all. Oh, no, you didn't say it. It's definitely, it's got to be good. Uh, that, that was a surprise, <laughs> like, honey, I'm home. Yeah, right. what, what you doing here? Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, you, you know, I, I, I'll speak to that. I mean, one one of the great homecomings for me was because I'm real big on family. Uh, being able to come home, I have a family member that's no, that's no longer with us. Not my my uncle in this particular case, but mm-hmm. I came home from the okay. military, and 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 and. Uh, my my grandfather at that particular time was having some issues and just being able to sit and talk to him and, and get some of that wisdom and just have that last conversation, mm. you know, because you never know mm-hmm. when it's going to be that last conversation. But I was right, home right. for about 30 days or so. Uh, and then I went back to Europe uh, and about six months later, he had unfortunately uh, passed on, mm-hmm. uh, rest in heaven. But, but it was great to see him because he had been in and out of consciousness mm-hmm. uh, and and. and coming home you know how people just hold on for that last minute we had a great conversation so I'll never forget that so that was a great homecoming for me to be yeah. able to spend some quality time with him and he was just really conscious about what we were talking about mm. great that's awesome. that's that's for real yeah. that's real talk that's, and, that's, yeah. and that's what we're looking for yeah yeah so I'll, I'll share th- this thing as, as, as far as homecoming this is interesting because you know you're, you guys are primarily dealing with of course real estate and investment and, and, and property so the, f- the first time I had to rehab a property was actually a condo that I owned that I was living in. And they had a, it had a situation with termites, but I didn't know that it, that, that it had termites. And one day I was taking a shower and the wall fell in, just crumbled what? on me. <laughs> what? It just, it just Why are you in the shower? Well, it literally, no. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. It literally, fe- it literally <laughs> fell in on me. I was like, damn, man, what the? So at the time I didn't realize that it was termites. I didn't know why the wall fell in. It just just collapsed mm-hmm. so after looking at that and investigating and then they we saw that it was that it was you know obviously a huge termite infestation where the termites had eaten all the way through the wood where it was just like paper at that point wow. so the wood had become so weakened that it could no longer even support the weight of the tile mm-hmm. that was on the on the back of board that it was attached to right. and that's what caused it to collapse so I had uh, been so anyway, once that once that situation happened, I immediately mm-hmm. called some folks like, "Hey, man, I need to get this stuff repaired." Um, unfortunately, the association hired like a jack leg, and my Here man, you know, I came in. He didn't know what he was doing. Uh, I came in, and he was trying to sister up some new wood next to the stuff that had already been eaten, eaten up eaten instead of taking termite, it out. Instead of taking it's it like, out, wait, did he notice the termites? Come on, man, you could it, 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 the wood <laughs> had was gone. It was like paper, but it what, was still the top. What part you trying left. to say, money man? So, so <laughs> yeah, it wasn't me. Oh, it wasn't me. Yeah, it wasn't me. me. <laughs> it was the. Uh, it was actually the the you know the association had you know determined like hey this guy is who we're going to use to replace oh, it wow. right. uh, and he didn't know you know he didn't know what he was doing trying to save save a little money so you know he was just like, hey, i'm gonna go get you know bob the builder over here who say oh, you know what he's doing oh, <laughs> trying to throw Look. something in there so yeah um after i saw that i saw i i saw that i had to take control of the situation so i immediately said look man 
thank you for coming out, but your services are no longer required. I appreciate that. We're going to take it from here. And, mm-hmm. you know, obviously he was like, well, they, they told me to be here. I'm like, no, no, I'll call him. You, you know, you're good. Just, you know, thank you. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. after that, I, I realized I had to take control, of, take control of it from a project perspective. As we began to pull things out, it, we actually saw, I actually saw that the problem was much bigger than, was, than we initially expected the problem to be. So on the surface, it appeared as though there were two, two boards or two joists that had been eaten by termites. So if anybody knows anything about termites, it doesn't just affect two pieces of wood. It right. is a house-wide, system-wide problem. Right. And so as we begin to dig more into it and see all the stuff that was compromised, there was not only the walls in the bathroom, but then it was the walls that the bathroom was attached to. It, it extended into the pantry, extended into the kitchen, it oh. extended into the adjacent bedroom. It was a takeover. So, <laughs> it the, so it was a situation that had happened for a long time. Now, most people will say, well, how come you didn't get a termite inspection before you bought the place? And the answer to that question is, I did. Not only did I get a termite inspection, but I had a, certif- a certification saying that it had been inspected and it was found not to have termites. So hmm. the reality is, is that the place did, in fact, probably have termites, and the, the inspector was uh, probably negligent in, in what he had to do. Wow. But Are we by that time, I, yeah, I had the property too long, and you know that that um, part of it, 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 we couldn't even go after the guy uh-huh. uh, because it, the the transaction was too old. So, long story short, uh, the learning lesson here, the homecoming part, is that once I got the work started, um, and it was under construction. I was out of town. Uh, I was supposed to come home in two days, and I got a call from the fire chief in that in that village. And he says, yeah, I was giving you a call because I got a report that uh, there's some work going on at this at this address, mm-hmm. and I don't see any permits on file. Mm-hmm. I said, uh, okay, oh. well, I'm just doing, you know, I'm just fixing some things. I'm just making some repairs. And he was like, okay, well, I mean, how extensive are the repairs? And I was like, uh, let's repair to the bathroom. And he was like, okay, well, I- I'm going to need to see that uh, mm-hmm. because some people have, you know, complained about the noise and some of the work going on. So I'm going to need to to check it out. Mm-hmm. You know, when can you get here? I said, well, actually, look, I'm, I'm out of town, but I'll be back in two days. He mm-hmm. said, well, I'm going to have to shut you down for a couple of days until you come back. Give me a call. I'll come out and inspect it. Mm-hmm. So when he came out, he, he looked at it, and I figured this was going to happen, but he was like, you, you're joking, right? <laughs> you, you, well, well, you restructured uh, the whole, uh, <laughs> you restructured the entire condo. My man said a few repairs. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, Chief, it didn't start out this way. Mm-hmm. It started out as just it was a it was a problem with the bathroom. We found out all this other stuff. He said, look, man, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm not going to um, write you a citation. I'm not going to fine you. Mm-hmm. But you got to get a contractor in here. You got to come to the village, apply for a license, and if you do that within the next thirty days, we'll we'll give you like I'm not going to give you any fines. You just pay for the cost of your permits, and you get back to work. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, okay, Chief, was, I appreciate that. Exactly. So he so, he hit so him with the three piece. Huh? Right, right. right. That, that's my <laughs> ticket for this. <laughs> ticket that, for that. Yeah, <laughs> that's my homecoming story. I came home to a stop work order. <laughs> 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 so. Uh, that was my lesson to always have all your permits in place going going forward. Right. Yeah, definitely. All right, cool. To all the investors out there. Oh, <laughs> hey, due diligence. Yes, sir. Due diligence. All right, so this is a point where we ask, are there any charitable um, causes or charitable organizations that you work with or that you would want people to pay attention to? Hmm. Um, that, that's a great question. I wouldn't say that Anything that comes to mind, I can tell you what we did over the last few years or so. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. We did a, our second annual coat drive. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. and, and we would go out and pick um, a school, um, a few churches, you know, and, and identify the need. And la- this past year, we did over 150 coats. Oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh-huh. We also uh, pitched in with Quentin Love that owns Quench. Uh, and helped with his turkey drive also. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, so, so that was all on the news and stuff like that. So, yeah. so we we kind of give back, you know, somewhat under the radar, you know. Um, and so it, it's really important to us to make sure that we give back to the community that gives so much to us. I mean, since you mentioned that, I mean, you also you know helped out with the ho- the home with, giveaway with, with the home that giveaway. we did right. with yeah, Cook yeah, County and, Land and, Bank. and all that equipment. That was over three thousand dollars worth of equipment that that we blessed. 
um, Vanessa with great young lady that actually you know uh, had to, took advantage of the home. But yeah, mm-hmm. we gave a lot of equipment away. But it was it was worth it. She loves it. Yeah, that was one of the most fulfilling things that we ever participated. I, I swear, in. man, when we met her, and and we <laughs> and I'm just expound on it. We had her thinking she was one of two finalists. The other finalists were actually Cook County employees. That was so funny. <laughs> yeah. And so we, and we we shook her hand like, man. I hope you win. I hope you win. <laughs> I'm praying, for I'm you praying that you win. <laughs> and her whole family, they all holding hands, praying and stuff like that. Yeah, not knowing they had already hilarious. won. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> when she won, she was jumping up and down. And it made me feel so good inside. Yeah. Right. That, whole, that was one of the best renovations we ever did. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's nothing like... When you see the reaction on someone's face that really appreciates it. Right. You know, and, and mm-hmm. you can tell she appreciated it from the heart. You know, because not only was this going to be for her family, but her grandchildren that she spent a lot of time with. Right. Uh, yeah, according yeah. to the conversation mm-hmm. we had. So, yeah. so that was mm-hmm. great. We look forward to the next one. Yeah. yeah we Absolutely. do too. <laughs> it won't be the last one. You know that. <laughs> right, right. You see you know how that? we said? We yeah. look forward to the next one. Right. right. Yes. All right. So that's right. Y'all, y'all heard it here. The Downer Brothers and Secure Home Automation will be working together. All 2020, best believe. Absolutely. Best there believe. You go. All right. So at this point, um, I go into into Anthony's after set, and okay. <laughs> Anthony's after set is you know after the party, after all the events are over with, you go to the after set, you're hanging out. It's late at night, and you know sometimes you always got that friend that wants to drop some knowledge or drop some wisdom. So this is this is my crack at it. I want you guys, and, he, and he's not even drunk. Uh, <laughs> so this is what I want you guys to, to take with you um, for for the after set. Um, rejoice in rejection. Sometimes when we get rejected from a situation, we're hurt. We're initially hurt. Maybe mm-hmm. it might be uh, some um, you know a, a relationship where the person that we're with no longer wants us. They reject us. Maybe there's a job. You know that that you wanted to have, and all of a sudden you get fired or let go. Sometimes there is some team or something that you really wanted to be a part of, and you get rejected. They no longer want your services. Hmm. Well, you know hmm. what? Sometimes you have to rejoice in that because a better opportunity may be just what you need from that rejection. Sometimes you ha- you take that rejection mm-hmm. to rejuvenate. Sometimes you take that rejection and you you have you, you you take that as a chance to go to rest and relax and reset. Mm-hmm. Because maybe after you evaluate the situation that you just got rejected from, you find yourself in a better situation. Maybe that weight is lifted. Maybe rejoicing in the fact that you got rejected and finding out who you really are and what you really value and what you've learned from that experience is exactly what you needed. And it wasn't until you got rejected that you were able to to, to, to understand that. So for all of you out there that might, might be hurting right now because you're, you got rejected from a situation you want to be a part of, just know at some point, once you get past it, once you get into a better situation, you're going to rejoice that you were rejected from that situation. Trust me. I know. And that's Anthony's after set. All right. So at this point, though, mm-hmm. we got to get him some homecoming alumni gifts. <laughs> 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 so we want you guys to take your shirts with you. Okay. You know, represent that dream, plan, plan execute. execute. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you know the All motto. Right. Dream, plan, That's execute. I love yeah. it. Dream, plan, execute. All right. And, 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 you know, we want you want everybody to always take that with you. So, you guys, mm-hmm. you know, our listeners, those are our homies. Bam. But you yeah. guys, you guys, you guys are the homecoming <laughs> alumni. Yes, sir. So, welcome, to, welcome, to, the <laughs> welcome to the alumni. Welcome to the alumni. That's what's up. All right. Appreciate so, that. now, we need you all to tell people where they can find you for your products, your services, and to connect with you personally. Absolutely. Um, you can definitely find us on Facebook, Secure Home and Automation. Um, you can find us on Twitter, you know, Secure Home and Automation, uh, LinkedIn, Secure Home and Automation, and those are the handles that you can find us at. Uh, so I'd like to add to that, of course, the website is going to be one of the best ways that you can see product and information. That's going to be securehome.tech. So mm-hmm. S-E-C-U-R-E-H-O-M-E dot T-E-C-H, securehome.tech. You can definitely check that out. And then obviously... Our uh, phone number is there, so you can give a call to the office. Okay. And if you have any security needs, please give us a call. Y'all have an and Instagram? We will ask to do that. 
Instagram as well. Secure Home and Automation Instagram. Oh, yeah. I was making yeah. sure because okay. I didn't hear that. Yeah, one. a lot of the homies yeah. they, they definitely yeah, go to Instagram. Instagram. Definitely Instagram people. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not the I'm not the IG guy. But <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, well we we really appreciate you guys coming out to hang with us to be able to give our, you know to give all the homies out there that information and that inspiration. Mm -hmm. sure. And um, if y'all like these shirts, by the way, y'all can go to the Brothers dot com. Uh, mm -hmm. And go to the merchandise part, or it's also on our link tree uh, on our Instagram page. That's so. right. And, you know, come back for more. You know, it's all about that real estate, that business, and that financial literacy. Thank you for checking in. This is Anthony. This is Anton. And this is Homecoming with the Downer Brothers. See you next time. Thank you for tuning in to Homecoming with the Downing Brothers podcast. For more information on how to dream, plan, execute in real estate, business, and financial literacy, visit www.thedowningbrothers.com. Welcome to Homecoming with the Downer Brothers. This is Anthony. This is Anton. Man, I cannot wait to get into this because we got somebody who we know is doing real work in the city. We have Bonita Harrison. And when I say that she is like developer extraordinaire i'm talking about developer of the year 2019 in cook county yeah 2019 so uh if she 